Hello, Raw Mithril here once again, getting back to Mega Man Network Transmission, and we're pretty close to the end, really. In fact, if we look at our chip library, there it is, I always forget which icon that is, we have 134 out of 137 chips, only three left to go, and they're all in the undernet, the last place we need to go. There's also the program advance memo, which I haven't come anywhere close to filling out. Hmm. Only 14 in this one, really. Huh, after the next bit that I record, I might actually consider going ahead and filming all the program advances, at least. There's not as much of a point to it as there is with, say, the Game Boy Advance games, where they'll give you, like, a completion star, but they give you a listing, so may as well fill that out. But for now, let's continue on our way. As we go, one thing I do want to address, I've gotten a lot of people lately that have been asking me to check out their videos and, you know, give them feedback and everything, and while I'd really love to, the thing you have to keep in mind is I can't really watch that many videos during the day. Just part of the annoyance of Usenet. So, if I am unable to do so, please don't take it personally. It's just something, if I had more freedom to watch videos whenever I wanted, I'd be happy to do that, but as things are, I just really can't. Oh, still standing watch there, that's man, okay. Enter the undernet from here? Why, yes. We're finally here, the Undernet. Do you sense anything, Mega Man? Yes, the life virus is definitely in here, no doubt about it. Okay, let's go smash it. <laughs> well, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so the main enemy we have to deal with here are the Scudless viruses, and they come in all their various varieties. And they're in charge of... the Life Aura series of chips. All three are represented here, so those are the last chips that I'm missing. Oh, that's not strong enough, is it? I have anything better. Well, that's kind of overkill. Hmm. Wonder if I could combo. Let's see, Fire Blade, Gust Sword, Var Sword, Proto Man, and Double Jump just to have it in reserve. This is probably going to be rather risky, but hey, no risk, no reward. Really? Well, that's insulting. Now we get Recover 150. Well, you're quite in the way, aren't you? Can I at least get rid of you? Not nearly fast enough to get the chip from you, but at least it does the job. Whoa, hi there! Oh dear, and I don't have anything that can deal with your auras. That is a problem. Now for the tricky bits. You can actually use the ice cubes made by the blue scuttle viruses as platforms, or you can just jump. HP memory. And mem up. You know, I'd really like that Recover 300 to cycle back around. Thank you! Oh! More concerned with that for now. 
Yeah. That could have gone very badly. I didn't quite mean to jump there. Xcode hint 3. Uh, key items, that's what it is. Xcode hint 3. Where the fire started, repair after you arrived there. I think these are all just cluing us in different ways that we can get to where base was, actually. And we get HP memory. Hammer. And... Slasher. How much health do we have, anyway? 980, so we're still missing one HP memory somewhere. Might be one of the areas that I missed due to my ridiculous speeding. The cyber world is warped up ahead. What is it? Is it the life virus doing it? I think so, but this area is so unstable I can't even jack out. So if we keep going, we won't be able to go home until we defeat it. Well then, let's not go there just yet. HP memory, there we go. 1,000 health, we found them all. And a mem up. And... A gold fist. So, yeah, as that said, if we go through that warp, we can't get back. And therein lies the problem. Anything that you've done here in the Undernet, if you want to save it, you have to jack out now. Meaning, any life auras that you've collected, any of the mystery data that you've collected, if you go through that warp, you're not keeping it in the next game. Kind of a pain, that. So, yeah. Out we go. Mainly because I want to keep all the new stuff that I got there, all that mystery data, and uh, I kind of need to figure out a better way of going against the Scudless viruses, because I want those life ores. So yeah, I'll be back after that last bit of chip grinding. At least we're getting close to the end. That and also I still need to consider if I'm actually going to be filming program advances. So, see you again once I've made those decisions. Alright, so indeed, I have decided to film all the program advances. So before we actually get to that, let's discuss a little bit about those program advances. They have some kind of strange rules to them in this game. The most notable of which is, once you create a program advance, it uses one use of each chip that's actually used in the advance itself. For instance, if you make Zeta Cannon, Cannon, High Cannon, and M Cannon will all go down by one. However, they will still remain in your folder. They'll just have one less use of them. This can be used to kind of cheese the system a little bit. If you have a bunch of chips in your folder that have zero uses left of them, and then just put in the chips for the program advance you want, then every time you go into the custom menu, boom, those chips will be right there. So, yeah, you can kind of cheese your way through some things that way. Especially if you start using full custom after each use of the advance. So, there is that. Also, once you actually make a program advance, no matter how many megabytes that particular chip that goes into it would use, the program advance itself seems to have a minimal use of megabytes. So, it can unleash a powerful attack and still let you use other chips if you have others selected after them. So with that, let's get right to it. So, starting off our collection of program advances is an old standard, though put together a little bit differently. By combining cannon, high cannon, and M Cannon, we get Zeta Cannon. This is a rather nice advance, giving you the effect of Invisibility 3 plus 120 damage cannon. Quite useful and destructive. After all, we've seen how it shreds base. 
Next is, surprisingly, the only other Zeta advance in the game. Combining Raton 1, 2, and 3, we get Zeta Raton. It's the same basic idea as Zeta Cannon, except you can throw as many Radons as you want for a while. It does less damage, 90 compared to 120, and is comparatively a bit unwieldy, but it does have its uses. Next up, we need to combine Spreader, Bubble Spread, and Heat Spread. This gives us the rather sillily named Giga Death. Yeah, you can't help but say that with a metal voice. Anyway, Giga Death does 300 damage. It has a rather nice spread effect on it, so it can be a good crowd clearer too. No element on it, but at 300 damage, do you really need one? Next up is an advance we saw back in Battle Network 2. Combining Double Needle, Triple Needle, and Quad Needle, we get the Arrows advance. Each hit does 100 damage, which makes it fairly powerful with how many hits you throw during this. The only drawback is it does keep you grounded for a bit, so make sure you're safe if you're going to use this one. For the next one, we need Little Bomb, Cross Bomb, and finally, Big Bomb. This gives us Ultra Bomb, a bomb which does 200 damage. Beyond that, it has a rather nice explosive range on it, so if you have a lot of viruses in one area, it's a great crowd clearer. Next up, we have Life Sword 1, a fairly bog standard program advance. This one's made by combining sword, wide sword, and long sword. Pretty standard by having a wide range and doing a decent amount of damage for chips found so early on. It does 200 damage and has a wide range of attack. Of course, there are better versions to it. On that note, next up we have Life Sword 2. Made by combining Fire Sword, Aqua Sword, and Elect Sword. It pretty much works the same way, except it does 100 extra damage. So, 300 damage, there you go. The last of the Life Sword advances, Life Sword 3, is created by combining Fire Blade, Aqua Blade, and Elect Blade. Once again, it's pretty much the same effect, just with a different damage. This time, a rather whopping 400 damage, so be certain to make this hit count. For the next one, it's time to combine Guts Punch, Cold Punch, and Dash Attack. Combining these gives us... Punch. Kind of an underwhelming name. This delivers three quick punches in succession, and kind of leaves you trapped during it. Very short range, and... questionable at best, as far as worth is concerned. They could at least send the punches flying, I mean, really. Our next advance makes use of the three navis that were guarding Zero, or at the very least their weapons. This one's made by combining Sonic Blade, Gravity Hold, and Star Arrow. With this, we get Meteors. Well, that's flashy. Each hit is set to do 80 damage, but with that many hits? Uh, who's counting? Now it's time for the first of the Navi advances, and a rather useful one at that. Feeling a bit under the weather? You need the ultimate cuteness of roll. Combine the chips Repair, Recuff 300, and Roll. This gives you Big Heart. It does do 100 damage, but where it really comes into its own 
it completely heals your HP. Even if you're down to 1 HP from 1000, it's a complete heal. Highly useful. Next amongst the Navi advances, we have Guts Shoot, made by combining Guard, Dash Attack, and Gutsman. I don't think that's what they mean by teamwork. It does 300 damage, but you have to be certain that you have a clear path to whatever target you're actually trying to hit, because you can only hit one. So it's pretty good against Navis, I suppose. For the next one, it's time to combine Custom Sword, Variable Sword, and Proto Man. With this, we get Double Hero. The important thing to notice is that it does a lot of hits, but only in front of you, so anything behind you is not getting hit by this one. Still, if you have all your enemies on one side, this is a good one to use. The final program advance is one that can be missed permanently if you don't go and save zero. This one requires High Guard, Z Saber, and Zero himself. With that, we get Zero Counter. Kind of a strange range on this one, and something has to actually strike the shield before Zero will come out to attack. However, the power of 300 damage does make this one rather useful, if you're good at hitting with it. And so with that out of the way, we've taken care of all the program advances. Now if we look in our library, between that and my chip grinding, we've maxed out the normal library list, all 137 chips, and we've done all 14 program advances. Hmm. Kind of strange that it obviously has room for five chips over there in the program advanced list, and yet none of them actually go that high in this game. But I digress. With that out of the way, all that's left is the actual endgame, which will be coming up next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you at the end of the internet, because, well, we've already been through there once.